Hello there, my very good friends. On today's wrestling news, we're going to talk about WWE's new main force. <laughs> A big update on Forbidden Door. Ronda Rousey has said she really wanted this WWE match. And Ric Flair addresses that restaurant incident. I'm Adam Wilborn. And I'm Andy Murray. <laughs> this is the news. Yeah, we had to wrap the Flair trilogy, didn't we? Of course. We had to, we had to put a nice little <laughs> bow on that after talking about it for the past two days. Uh, right, let's talk about the person WWE is booking as a main force at the moment. It's Solo Sokoa. Yes. Um, just like an interesting booking note on how they're presenting him. This is a report from Wrestle Votes. Uh, they, oh, it's been a while. It has, it has. Had to break my Twitter embargo to get the screenshot for this <laughs> one. Um, but they posted, Interesting tidbit here. Sources suggest that Solo Score's recent aggressive streak is part of a strategy to establish him as the main force within this new phase of the bloodline ahead of Jacob Fatu's debut. However, some trepidation remains within creative over fear that Fatu's presence could outshine Solo at this stage. So I think much of this is quite evident in the way he is presented on TV at the moment. He's clearly the ringleader in this current, I think the word they're using is rogue bloodline. Yeah, Something bloodline like 2.0. Bloodline 2. rogue, more like. <laughs> uh, where they're, they're going a bit off-piste. Uh, Solo has effectively kicked Jimmy Uso out for losing at WrestleMania. He has installed Tamatonga and Tangaloa. Um, Jacob Fatu seemingly on the way. Maybe Hikuleo in a couple of months yeah. when his New Japan contract comes up. Um, the the sword of Damocles hanging over all of this is that, hey, another guy in that group also lost at WrestleMania, so is he going to get kicked out as well? Meanwhile, you've got Paul Heyman over here going like, <laughs> doing other facial expressions uh, because he doesn't quite know what to make of all of this. Meanwhile, over here on Raw, you've got Jey Uso. And meanwhile, over here at home, you've got Roman Reigns. And meanwhile, over here at home, you've also got Jimmy Uso who's injured. Well, no, he is actually injured. I don't know yes. why I did that. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot of pieces in play and they're clearly um installing solo as the instigator of all yeah. of this aren't they yeah he's, he's i mean he's always been the horrifically violent one he was going to be going to be employed to kill Sami Zayn after his trial if i remember <laughs> rightly he almost cut his head off but he <laughs> has he has kicked it up a notch he's like it's a good dilemma to have this for me like if jacob fatu comes in and overshadows solo great You've got another kick-ass Samoan. Like, I don't see a real problem here, but I understand why they're doing it. They obviously presumably want to build eventually to either a one-on-one -on -one match between Solo and Roman or two factions, uh, two different versions, I suppose, of the bloodline going head-to-head. -head. It feels inevitable that's going to be some sort of maybe War Games match. Yeah. Um, but I, I really like the development. I've, I've loved the bloodline story throughout, obviously. Um, and I'm really excited for, for Jacob Fatu. Like... I thought it was going to be inevitable he was going to show up at Backlash. And then Tangaloa showed up, and I was like, cool, that's a great addition as well. Hikaleo, as you mentioned, could be another one added into it. Um, yeah, more of this sort of thing for me. Yeah, I agree. I think uh, Jacob Fatu should probably be the workhorse of this group. Yeah. Um, purely because I think he's the most exciting wrestler of the people they've put together on Solo's side. Great promo um, as well. Yeah, like, he's just really great, and he's going to be really dynamic, and, like, he's so explosive. Yeah. Uh, he's going to be a lot of fun. Like, a lot of people who've never seen Jacob Fatu wrestle before are going to be like, oh, this guy rules. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be fun to watch, fun to observe. Uh, I like this rogue element. Like, I like the idea that they're just this uncontrollable gang of just dudes who'll beat anyone up and don't care, uh, even going to the top of the table and taking Roman Reigns out if they want. Yeah. Like, I'm into that idea. Um, How's the final boss? Uh, yeah, well, where are the chills now, Dwayne? He was going to be um, in Backlash, but he was 24 hours late. He showed up and everyone had gone home. <laughs> yeah, he had a bottle of piss with him. It was really weird. <laughs> really weird time. But yeah, I'm into it. I'm totally into it. I think, uh, you know, Solo did look a bit like he was wearing his dad's suit the that other day, funny. right? Like he'd borrowed it or something. Yeah. But like, Look hey, smart, Solo. Yeah, sharp it up, boy. <laughs> uh, I don't know what accent that was. Yeah, he's, Is that Wallace he's... and Gromit? I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing here. We've turned it into a nightmare. Uh, but yeah, I'm into the bloodline. Are you into the bloodline? Let mm. us know in the comment section below. Also, if you're into things, uh, tomorrow on this channel, oh. at 3 p.m., we are debuting our live show from Philadelphia. The premiere is already up. You can set your reminders now. Yep. Uh, but yeah, 3 p.m. UK time. That's 10 a.m. on the East Coast. 
I'm not sure we're on the West Coast. I'm not smart enough to figure that out, you tell me. Uh, but yeah, tune in. Uh, maybe some of us will be in the chat. To, Absolutely. To talk, talk crap with you. Yeah, Stop it's going to be it's gonna be live, as you say, 3 p.m. on Friday. Uh, you may have already seen snippets of like our entrances going up. We're also releasing the podcast segment on the podcast channel later on today. But I've got a little uh, thing to help people remember when to tune in for the uh, It's Always Sunny at World Culture full live show, um, which is Remember, Remember, the 10th of May. So. <laughs> Uh, let's bring you an update on Forbidden Door um, with some interesting additions uh, seemingly being added to it. Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful uh, spoke with Rocky Romero ahead of the New Japan Resurgence show, which goes down on May 11th, uh, and asked him about Forbidden Door. Um, it's going to be an obviously New Japan AEW co-branded show, but other companies are going to be involved. Romero told Fightful that Stardom will definitely be a part of this year's Forbidden Door and that CMLL is very likely as well. Um, and he said, the sky is the limit for Bindor going down June 30th on Long Island, of course. Really excited for that show. Yeah, I'm looking forward to potential participation from Stardom and CMLL for sure. Um, it's really funny that Stardom had the regime change with Rossi Ogawa leaving and, and other people seemingly as well. And suddenly, AEW is uh, wide open and working ah. with Stardom. It's funny that, isn't it? Um, I know that Ogawa didn't have much uh, like business power towards no. the end, but still. Um, yeah, and the CMLL relationship has been a really fun aspect of AEW programming. Like, I've really enjoyed things like Hetch Cero coming over and wrestling Brian Danielson. I really like the, the mini feud between the BCC and the CMLL mm -hmm. guys they had going for a few weeks there. Uh, so, hopefully all what, was of, the, what was the show? Is it the Triple A show? What was the show they had that all awesome CMLL? Match? Yeah, sorry. Yeah. yeah, I can't remember the exact name of it, but then they did the Danielson Blue Panther match the week after. Yes, it was yes. Just a great time, a great time. Uh, this is the kind of stuff that I live for as a wrestling mm. fan. Uh, so, yeah, I'm looking forward. And also, like, New Japan not having the best run at I the was, moment. I was about to say, yeah, they've, they've sort of burned through quite a lot. I'm not no, saying that I wouldn't want to see matches that are already, with people that have already featured on Forbidden Door previously again this year. But they have, like, Sid always says, like, outside of, like, say, Naito and people like that, there's not many others that you're like, I'm desperate to see them go up against AW people. The addition of Stardom and uh, CML to this mix just refreshes yeah. it up. I suppose the biggest New Japan star we're going to see is Jack Perry. So. Ob obviously. Uh, no, New Japan's just a cool product at yeah, the moment. Fair. So whether, whether, you like, whether you like the shows or you dislike the shows, it's not got anywhere near the same level of hype it did in like 2017, 2018, mm. right? Um, so like the attraction isn't quite as high as it could be. So I think supplementing that with Stardom and CMLL, which for my money are the two best in-ring promotions in the world, makes it very exciting indeed. Look, I, I, I do not care about video packages and, and, and oh, who is this? All of that rubbish. Yeah. Uh, these shows are for the freaks. Uh, these shows <laughs> are for the people who are super tapped into this stuff. The people like me. The people who just want, uh, oh, cool. Yeah, no, it would be really cool to see Shingo wrestle Brian yeah. Danielson. No, I really want to see uh, Mayu Iwatani wrestle Serena Deeb. Yeah, that would be sick. Let's just do it for the hell of it. Um, I'm into this stuff, and uh, I think it's great. Where's Toriano and all this? That's what I want to know. I don't know, man. Probably still, <laughs> still try. You know what? It's actually a crime that they haven't had yeah. one of these yet. It'd be so fun. Him and Moxley, uh, the rematch. <laughs> yes. The big rematch everyone's been waiting for. And he can for. vlog some DVDs as well. I will pull up uh, pull up to your house in a strangely comedic vehicle that I have inexplicably <laughs> acquired. Great promo. Uh, right, shall we talk about uh, Ronda Rousey? Yes. Uh, she's been talking uh, about Becky Lynch. She said this was the match in WWE that she really wanted but never got. So for a while, it did look like we were trending in that direction, right? When Ronda went away, they obviously did the WrestleMania 35, mate. Was it as yeah, far five, back yeah. as that? Jeezy peeps. Uh, where Ronda was pinned by Becky. Uh, bit of a Shan finish. Bit of a dodgy all round dumb match, in my opinion. You shouldn't have been a triple threat and she should have submitted Ronda Rousey. Simple. Yeah, you would have had that match. But no, we had to get Big Chaz in there. I like Charlotte Flair. I'm only joking. Yeah, it's but not her fault. It's the old regime's fault. That's yeah. the problem. Silly sausages. Um, Ronda came back and we all thought, hey, cool. They'll yeah. do it one-on-one -on -one to Mania. They never did it. They never got around to it. And it was a shame because for a while it felt like the obvious match to do. But after a couple of months heading, you know, into that run, it was like, ah, uh, maybe not. Maybe we don't need this yeah. anymore. So the, the wrestling world kind of moved past it. Um, but she was uh, doing a live, a live signing for her new book. Uh, it's called Our Fight. Mm -hmm. And she said she, uh, if she had a UFC dream opponent as well, It'd be Gina Carano. Ah, yes. Yeah, I remember go. that from years and years and years ago. Yeah, I remember that. That was uh, 
an interesting time in uh, mixed Gina Carano arts. now, of course, in a Star War, or was previously, not anymore. Gina Carano. Mm. She has uh, had That's an interesting. The nicest thing I could say about yeah, her is yeah. she's been in a Star Her career war. has taken some turns over the past couple of years. Mm. Uh, but without diving into any culture wars, uh, I'll just read to you what Ronda Rousey said. Uh, Gina Carano, 100%, I would love that. That's one I would consider coming out of retirement for. Uh, even probably not the best for medical, uh, but it'd be hard to say no to that one. WWE, if I could have anyone. Well, I really wanted to have that singles match with Becky, you know, that got constantly dangled in front of me, but I never got to have, which you could read about it in our book over at rfightbook.com. Uh, you, you can get it out and hear me bitch about that for a couple hundred, <laughs> for a couple hundred pages. Oh, I was going to say words then. <laughs> she was, she's, written, she's written a novella about this, apparently. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a lost match for sure. I do think that by, by the time, you know, after a few months, it did seem like there were better options for that WrestleMania than Ronda yes, and Becky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I can understand her frustration. Yeah, exactly. Like I say, it was the match we missed out on at 35 that felt the right thing to do at the time. And then when we found out she was coming back when she returned to the Royal Rumble, it, was, it just seemed ready-made for that. And then, yeah, for whatever reason, it just didn't happen. I can understand why she's disappointed in particular because obviously it was kind of the, the big thing she missed off on her first run. Um, and it was one of the, the you know, the, the, the most entertaining things on the build to WrestleMania for that match was those two just going yeah. at it on social media and what have you. And, uh, well, Ronda getting destroyed for the most part by Becky. But uh, yeah, like you say, I think I think towards the end, it would have just felt like, oh, you just, doing you're just it. doing it for the sake of doing it. Now. Yeah, the, it definitely lost the point where it was at its hottest. And I think uh, it's not a great shame from our standpoint that it didn't ultimately no. happen. Um, she did also reiterate that she's retired from MMA because of concussion issues. She won't be fighting Gina Carano. No. Uh, but at the time in MMA, that would have been a blockbuster yeah, fight. Huge, um, would have been huge. Like, remember when they first promoted Gina versus Cyborg, like, back in the day? Mm. That was huge as well. So, like, early pioneers of the women's scene. Yeah, it'd be pretty cool. Uh, Ronda also told me, you know, I've got my sources, my little girl. <laughs> she said uh, she will never fight Cyborg until Cyborg fights me because she's constantly running scared so I, she's terrified of you why do I do this to myself I've heard of this um, every now and again someone will like tweet Cyborg jokingly about her when are you fighting a mobile one she'll be like soon I'm like oh god one of these days she's Wait. just gonna pop up behind that thing in the studio and choke you out yeah. and I'm gonna run away <laughs> I'm not gonna please, help please please don't hurt me Chris Cyborg <laughs> yeah. uh, anyway let's talk about Ric Flair shall is we is there any MMA fighters you think you could take in a fight um, no, none is the answer <laughs> Zero Probably really old ones now, <laughs> and even still, no, nope. I think I would probably get battered by a drawing of Randy Couture, too, like a picture of him. <laughs> I would trip falling into the octagon and knock myself out. Yeah, to be honest, you know what I would do if a celebrity, uh, I'm not a celebrity, but like if uh, hey, I, we'll do, we'll give you uh, X amount of money to do an MMA fight, I would go in the octagon and tap out, yeah, straight smart. away, bell, beep, still beep, get paid. Beep. It's a bit. <laughs> I think yeah. I'd still lose to Ben Askren after Jorge Masvidal need his head off. She <laughs> would still like, submit me somehow. Yeah, he'd find a way. These people are like, it would eat us alive. Yes. Yeah. Um, let's talk about Ric Flair though, because it's been ages since we've spoken about him. <laughs> a whole, uh, less than 24 hours. But he has given his side of the restaurant incident that you've probably heard all about over the last few days. If you haven't checked out our previous news videos on this topic, um, he was on the MJ Morning Show on Q105 um, to share his side of things saying it just escalated. I was wrong for getting mad, but I kind of felt like I was defending my position. I was wrong for losing my temper, he continued. Uh, when I feel like I'm put in that area where I'm uncomfortable and all of a sudden everything just fell apart, I got upset. I was wrong for getting upset. I probably should have just walked out the door, but it caught me so off guard because we were having a wonderful time. Then all of a sudden, someone in their kitchen said I did something wrong in the bathroom and there's no one there except, except me and him. Um, to counter the, the narrative as well that he was drunk, basically. He denied that, saying he only had two Michelob Ultras and a couple of mixed drinks, probably. <laughs> Michelob. I don't know. Uh, but all in, all's well that ends well, because Flair said he ended up ordering some more Paisano stuff on Uber Eats. So <coughs> hopefully <coughs> hopefully the, the relationship can be salvaged from all this. Yeah, good to wrap a nice little bow on this yeah. one. It's the Ric Flair trilogy. We had A New Hope on Monday, we had The Empire Strikes Back yesterday, and today we have, uh, what's the last Star Wars? Uh, the return of the man from the toilet. Yeah, <laughs> return of the 16-time world champion who's uh, 
kicking off in a restaurant. Uh, I'm glad that he at least has the self-awareness yes. to say I'm wrong. Look, it's the kind of incident that this restaurant probably deals with all the time, yeah. right? Some guy they've had to cut off is not happy Where about is it. Where is it in Florida? Yeah, it's Florida. Like, I love Florida, but yeah. like, I've been I've been to Florida over a dozen. Genuinely love it. Yeah. Um, but there's a lot of crazy people down there. They probably get, like, um, a pissed-up gator in there. Often, so <laughs> yeah. like, come on, you've had enough. Just waddles in the flatty. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm glad he at least uh, has said that. I mean... It's really hard to tell with Rick, right, when he's actually hammered because his speech is kind of... An old guy. It's a, yeah, he's an old dude and he's been through a lot. Um, it happens a lot with him. Yeah, no one like watched this. that footage and thought, oh, my honors aren't looking good at this. It just yeah. it just seemed like... Anyway, I'm, I'm glad it's been resolved and hopefully, yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Nicholas Dickhead. That yeah, poor, and... Poor uh, guy. <laughs> When uh, when Andy's next in in Florida, he said he's going to go to Paisano's and check it out. Hey, I've been to check Gainesville. out the bathroom at least. See what's going on in there. Yeah, what's going on? Is there alligators in here? What's what's up? What's up? Uh, right, let's move on to your Twitter questions. At what culture WWE on X? Of course, you want to get in touch with us. Uh, great first question. Really good news as well. Mark Solid, who regularly sends us questions, sends us pictures of dogs and what have you. So. Mark says, morning, my guys. Morning, Mark. Um, if you could pair a male and female wrestler, one from WWE, one from AEW, who would you pair together? I'd pick Master Troll Drew and Timeless Tony Storm. Love that pairing. <laughs> but also, after years, my wife and I are finally going to have a baby. He's Aww. attached a picture of the ultrasound. Congratulations to Mr. and Mrs. Solid. Uh, really lovely news, this. Yeah, it's, congratulations, Mark. That's, that's I mean... It's the best news you're going to get in your life, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Good stuff. Love to hear it. Um, so should we pair yeah, let's do it. some WWE stars and some AEW stars? We have our box. Yeah. We will get a box of WWE people, stars well, eventually. People always ask when the WWE box is coming. This literally takes hours to do. Yeah, do you know how like, much money this costs as well? Yeah, I had to Paper, take it. a box that used to have Jalin and Shoe in it. Come uh, on. I had to cut down seven trees <laughs> to do that. Griff Garrison. Griff Garrison, okay. Let's pair Griff Garrison with Ariana Grace. Okay. Miss NXT. Why not? Why not? We will also have the pairing of, oh, yes, please, Juice Robinson. Oh, my goodness. Uh, and Bea Hale. <laughs> It'd be the loudest partnership in the entire universe. Couple more? Yeah, why not? Let's see who we get. Let's see who we get. There we go. Also, a serious one, uh, Gumfer and Serena Deep, because they respect the business and they yes. take it seriously. Uh, Christian Cage, perfect. Christian Cage, perfect. I'd love to see what he'd look like in WWE, can't imagine that. I know, it'd be really fresh. Um, Christian Cage <laughs> and Natalia. Okay. The boat and okay. the dad. The, the boat and the goat? Yeah. And, ooh, oh, oh. what's this? Is that Devon Dudley? Brandon Cutler. Oh. Brandon Cutler, ah oh, man. Shayna Baszler, because Brandon Cutler's really into like D&D &D and stuff, and Shayna Baszler's really into Warhammer 40k. Yes. They could be like the tabletop, uh, tabletop... Uh, table toppers, and they put you through a table. Boom, there you go, and the table's covered in Warhammer figurines. Yeah. So it really hurts. I like it. I really like that. Okay, let's have, let's have one more team that I need to actually genuinely pick. Let's have Charlotte Flair. And Kenny Omega. Oh, brother. Get well soon, Kenny Why Omega. Why the heck not? Um, next question today comes from Kevin Randall. Kevin, thank you for your question. Good morning. Uh, good morning, you dashing dude, says Kev. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Uh, I, nice. miss, I miss AW factions and battles between the factions and the storylines that came with it. Why do you think they've moved away from this? And what was your surprise American junk food on your visit? Oh, wow. Well, I think most a lot of people are still aligned with yeah. factions. They just generally... Do I emphasize it as much? Um, it's more Team AEW now, of course. Yeah, we're standing up for the, for the right to party. I don't know, I don't think that's what they're doing. <laughs> um, sorry, I've, I've completely lost myself here. Why do I think they've moved away from it? Um, I think that they've just, it's simply, I don't think they've consciously moved away from it. No. I just think that the creative definitely shifted in 2023 towards a more uh, sports entertainment style of presentation with the MJF Adam Cole stuff and the Timeless Tony stuff to a slightly differing degree. Um, and it's kind of back now with the, the Young Bucks as the authority heel figure mm -hmm. stuff. Uh, I just think it's a natural creative shift rather than them going, hey, we got to get away from this stuff. Plus, uh, I got really confused in the early days of AEW. I was like, there's so many factions. Where's the Wikipedia entry? There's like, there's like, what, the three, four? <laughs> I can't keep up. You're telling me that all these people are friends? Oh, no. Oh, no. Surprise American junk food on your <laughs> visit. Uh, 
eat, I didn't actually eat that much, but probably the cheesesteak because it was uh, even better than I anticipated. Yeah, I thought it was going to be good, but it was incredible. Ishka Bibbles, our recommendation. The Bibble. Yeah, I the think Eddie used the fan. I believe. Apologies if I got that wrong. Who recommended that to us on the on our penultimate night in Philly? That was really good. Uh, so thanks for the heads up on really that. Really awesome. Also, stadium food in America yeah. is good. I was going to say actually, this is going to be like oh, wild take from Wilborn. Hot dogs, right? Because <laughs> hot dogs are a bit crap here in the UK, I think it's yeah, fair to not say. The best. And like, I wanted a cheesesteak. I think it was night one. I went to the booth and I was yeah. like, cheesesteak. And they're like, we're out of cheesesteaks, obviously. Oh. Um, so I was like, oh, I'll have a hot dog, fine. And it was awesome. Yeah, I was like, that unreal. makes sense why they bloody love we've them gotta, over there. We've got to get you to Chicago if you like a hot dog. Oh. Get, go to Gene and Jude's. Sensational. Really want to go Chicago. Sen the best city in America. I love Chicago. It's awesome. I love Las Vegas. <laughs> WrestleMania is there. Yeah, this year. baby. Just so exciting. <laughs> and also, <laughs> Jonathan, me a seal. Jonathan Rivera, uh, who recommended to me Skittles gummies. Which G were. Is. No, they were good. They yeah. were good. Jonathan Rivera is a lovely man. Shout out to Jonathan. Night, a very pleasant individual. Uh, Ryan, Ryan King gives us our final question of the day. Ryan says, I thought Andy Murray deserved a treat uh, for deciding to leave the cesspool known as X. <laughs> living his best life over I'm here. I'm just taking a break. I'll be back. Makes sense. I'm addicted. Um, but thank you. They sent us this yesterday because I had a knobbly bobbly about half ten in the morning. If you don't know it, Google it. Phil put his in the fridge and then forgot about it for three <laughs> hours. And then he took it out and it was like a soup. It was a drink. <laughs> it was like... <laughs> Oh, yeah, you yeah. put an ice cream in the fridge. <laughs> I was like, who's put that in the fridge? And he went, oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. oh bugger. Um, <laughs> he so didn't say bugger. Off the back of me eating knobbly bobblies, um, Ryan King wants to talk about ice cream. If WWE bought back those ice cream bars, who would you want them to, to be associated with? Bugger Ray. I just, why am I saying bugger <laughs> so much? It's a good British slang word yeah. for a pain in the ass. Um... I don't know. I feel I, like LA Knight would be obviously uh, attached to it. B Fab, obviously. B Fab! Fab? Uh, do they have Fabs in the US? If they don't, they should. We'll bring some over the it's next like, time we're coming. If they that'll, don't have that'll one. That'll travel well. Yeah, yeah, I'll just put it in your case. It's uh, like a triple tiered bar where the I think one of them is like strawberry. Strawberry, raspberry, yeah. And then there's like. White. And then. Chocolate <laughs> sprinkles on the top. It's, yeah. Oh, Unbelievable. Yeah, they're great. It's good. They B are. Fab, because it's in her name. Sorry, B Fab. Um, uh, Jim Cornetto. Brilliant. Perfect. What a way to bring him back into the Yeah, field, yeah isn't it? he is. <laughs> He'd probably do that gimmick as well, because he's played a turtle before. <laughs> or he, did he book the turtle? Do they? I can't remember. They could have Snitsky come back. They've got that Happy Feet ice cream, haven't they? <laughs> they do. They do. <laughs> Happy Corbin. There you Happy go. Corbin. What else can we get? Um, uh, Truth Magnum. <laughs> Truth Magnum. Brilliant. <laughs> He's on one today. God, I love the Outrunners. They're so good. Solero Joe. There's all kinds of options here. What other ice creams have we got? Um, Maxi Bon Jacob Friedman. <laughs> There's so many. There's so many. Is that that thing? It's like a chalk ice. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Upgraded. Like yeah. a sandwich yeah. ice cream thing. Mini Calip. Bo Dallas. <laughs> <laughs> Mini Milk Rude. Doesn't really. Doesn't oh, yeah, and uh, Hamlet in the office said uh, Nobbly Bobbly Rude. <laughs> <laughs> Sean Calippo Hair. <laughs> I just want to eat some ice cream again now. Yeah, what else have we got? Uh, oh. oh, I used to love a screwball. <laughs> screwball Mike Bailey. <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear me! Uh, mir no miracle whips, not an ice cream. What? Am I Have we still got that in the office, by the way. No, I put it in the probably for the I best. I think I put it in the bin. Thank you to whoever said that. To it was us. Jeff Rademacher. It was Jeff. Yes, it was. Uh, uh, and he sat there, and we thought we should try that, and then we checked the date. It was, ah, it's two years out of date. <laughs> yeah, it went out of date quickly. Um, Let us know more. I'm, I'm, yeah. It's going to be a, a debate about the bloodline followed by ice cream people in yeah. the, uh, in the well, chat was, as well. It was monkeys yesterday. People were talking. Andy, you idiot, it's King Louis from the Jungle Book. Ah, so yeah. Thank you for that. But yeah. Anyway, on that note. Monkey on the car. Check this one out. It's um, We ranked every gimmick matches because okay. we are completely insane. It's good stuff. It is good. You should watch it. Bye. But actually, Gareth ranked them. But, we, you know, he's sensational. So watch it.